will begin this lecture by talking about direct products and direct sums of R modules. Let's say that M1 up through MK are R modules. We'll consider the set M1 cross M2 cross 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 MK, which will be all the tuples, little m1, little m2 up to little mk, where each little mi is in the R module, capital MI. This is a set, but we can also give it component-wise addition and define an action of R on this set by having R act on each component individually. So R acts on a tuple by acting on M1, acting on M2, acting on MK. This set is the direct product of M1 up through MK. And with this addition and action of R, this direct product is an R module. You should check that that's true, but uh, it's not hard to verify the axioms that you need to be an R module. This direct product is sometimes called the external direct sum of M1 up through MK and denoted M1 plus M2 plus 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 MK with these O plus symbols. Uh, why external direct sum? Well, this should remind you of something that happened when we talked about direct products and direct sums of groups, along with an external direct sum, we encountered an internal direct sum. And that's the same thing that's going to happen here. Before I get into that, let me say that in exercise 20 of section 10.3, you're given the analogous definitions for direct product and direct sums of arbitrary collection, collections of R modules. Uh, so here we have finitely many modules at the beginning, but you can also carry out a similar procedure for infinitely many R modules, but the details are a little more complicated. So uh, you can look at that. We won't need any of that here. So the next thing that we're going to prove is the analog of the recognition theorem for direct products of groups. So remember what the recognition theorem says is uh, you were given a group G and then two subgroups inside, or you're given a group G and you're asked, when is G isomorphic to a direct product of two of its subgroups? When can you find an H and a K inside of G that have some special property that tells you that G is isomorphic to at H cross K? All right, so that's proposition five in section 10.3, which says, okay, we're gonna start with N1 up through NK to be submodules of one R module M. The following three statements are equivalent. The first one is that the map from this direct product or this external direct sum of these R modules, N1 cross, 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 NK, to the sum of these K submodules of M, N1 plus, 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 NK, defined by taking a tuple A1 up through AK to their sum is an isomorphism of R modules. So what's the thing to note here is that this external direct sum, the elements here are tuples of uh, something from N1, something from N2, up to something from NK. But this sum of a bunch of submodules of M, this is a submodule of M. So this isomorphism is interesting. This one is a submodule of M, this one, the elements are tuples where each coordinate lives inside the corresponding module. All right, so that's the first uh, of these equivalent characterizations. The second one is that the intersection of nj with the sum n1 plus 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 nj minus one plus nj plus one plus 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 nk, that is the sum of all the other modules ni but not nj, equals zero. So over on the right-hand side, this is a submodule of M. This is a submodule of M. They both definitely contain the identity, the additive identity zero of M, but that's all they contain. OK, so that has to be true for every J between 1 and K. So the intersection of NJ with the sum of everything else is just zero. And the third characterization is that every x in this sum, n1 plus 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 nk, can be written uniquely in the form x equals a1 plus a2 plus 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 ak, where ai is in ni. So what are we seeing? For example, just to look at these two, uh, 
if you can write everything over on the right hand side in a unique form as a sum of elements of these modules, that means that this sum is isomorphic to this external direct sum. In that case, this sum is going to be called the internal direct sum. So this is just like something we saw for groups that um, we were using the term internal direct sum and internal and external direct sum in a case that they were isomorphic to each other. OK, so I'll pause and erase, and I'll say uh, something about the proof of this proposition. Let's prove this proposition. We want to prove that these three statements are equivalent. So what we're going to do is prove that 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, and that 3 implies 1. So they all imply each other. So we're going to start by proving 1 implies 2, but what we're actually going to do is prove the contrapositive, prove that not 2 implies not 1. So we're going to suppose that, OK, so what is the negation of 2? That would mean that, uh, OK, so it's not the case that for all j and j intersect, the sum of all the other ones is just equal to 0. So there's some j for which this intersection is not just 0. So we're going to pick that j and then take some non-zero element in that intersection. So aj will be an nj and also in n1 plus 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 nj minus 1 plus nj plus 1 plus 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 nk. OK, so what does that mean? That means that aj is equal to a sum of some elements in these modules. So it's a1 plus a2 plus 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 aj minus 1 plus aj plus 1 plus 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 ak, where each ai is in the module ni. Well, just subtracting aj from both sides, that means that 0 is a1 plus 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 aj minus 1 minus aj plus aj plus 1 plus the rest. And the important thing is not all of these terms are 0. In particular, minus aj is not 0. So what are we getting? We're getting a non-zero element, a1 up through aj minus 1 minus aj, aj plus 1 up to ak, that's in the kernel of this map pi. You apply pi to this map, you get this sum, which is 0. So there's a non-zero element in the kernel of pi. So pi is not injective. So it's certainly not an isomorphism of R modules. Now let's prove 2 implies 3. So we're going to prove that there is unique representation of elements x as sums a1 up through ak by saying, OK, well, what if a1 up through ak add up if a1 plus a2 plus 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 ak is equal to b1 plus b2 plus 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 bk for some a, i, b, i are in the module n, i. Well, for each j, what that means is you could take uh, b, j and subtract it from both sides. Take all the other AIs and subtract them from both sides. And you get AJ minus BJ equals B1 minus A1 plus B2 minus A2 plus 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 BJ minus 1 minus AJ minus 1 plus, you skip over the J term, BJ plus 1 minus AJ plus 1 plus 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 BK minus AK. All right, so why does that matter? Well, AJ minus BJ is definitely an NJ because AJ and BJ are an NJ. But we've also expressed this element as a sum of something in n1 plus something in n2 plus 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 something in nj minus 1 plus something in nj plus 1 plus 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 something in nk. So it's also in uh, this sum of all the other modules. And now we're going to use the fact that we know two holds. That's saying that the intersection of nj with this sum of all the other modules is just the zero element. So that means that aj minus bj is 0. And that means aj equals bj. So we just do this once for each j. right? For each j, this is true. And that means that a1 equals b1, a2 equals b2, ak equals bk. That the representation of elements as sums of things in each one of these modules ni is unique. Let's prove the last implication. 3 implies 1. So what is true about this map pi? This is always an R module homomorphism. And it's always surjective. Right? It's true that if you want to write something in n1 up through n1 plus 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 nk in this sum, it can always be written as something in n1 plus something in n2 plus 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 something in nk. 
But that tells you something on the left-hand side that will map to it under pi. Checking that pi is actually an R-module homomorphism is straightforward using one of the criteria of R-module homomorphisms that we proved um, in an earlier lecture. So what do we actually want to prove? Well, we want to prove that if three holds, that one is an isomorphism of R modules, but it's always an R module homomorphism and it's always surjective. So we just need to show that it's injective. And three is saying that the only way that something maps to zero, well, that's if you have a whole bunch of elements, A1 plus 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 AK equal to zero. But there's a unique way to get that. The only way to do that is to take a1 equals 0, a2 equals 0, plus, 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 ak equals 0. So this uniqueness gives us injectivity of this map pi. So it's an R-module homomorphism that's both surjective and injective. So it's an isomorphism. The last thing I want to do in this video, now that we've proven this proposition, is give one new definition. So if n1 up through nk are submodules of the R module n, m, and m is equal to the sum of all of these submodules, n1 plus 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 nk, and m satisfies any one of the three equivalent conditions of this proposition, then we say that m is the internal direct sum of these submodules, n1 up, n1 up through nk, and we write m equals n1 o plus n2 plus 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 o plus nk. And what's going on here is that part one of these three equivalent conditions in proposition five says that in this case, this internal direct sum is isomorphic to the external direct sum, this direct product of n1 up through nk. So that's explaining the use of this terminology of internal direct sum and external direct sum. So in the case that your uh, R module M satisfies any of these equivalent conditions, uh, then M is the internal direct sum on the right-hand side, right? The sum on the right-hand side is a submodule of M. So in particular, it can be equal to all of M and it's isomorphic to this external direct sum whose elements are not elements of M, but are tuples of elements, one from each of these modules, Ni.